Hello and welcome to yet another thrilling episode of GSE at Home. It's 10am and my name is James. And today we are going to be popping on our hard hats as we delve deep into caves and caverns and talk all about stalactites. So first off, what are stalactites? Well, if you've seen a picture of a cave, you might have noticed them having these long pillars of rock dangling from the ceiling. They almost look a little bit like spikes. Well, these are our stalactites, and these are very common in caves and caverns around the world. Stalactites are formed when water drips across the ceiling, and this picks up lots of rock and mineral from that ceiling surface. When it gets to a point, it'll then decide to drip off landing on the floor. And as it drips off, it also leaves behind all of that rock and mineral that it's gathered. Now at first, these stalactites aren't that big, but over time, they're gonna deposit more and more rock and mineral until we start seeing these spikes forming on the ceiling. The longer our water drips, the larger our stalactite gets, but, it does take quite a while to form. For example, a limestone stalactite can take up to a thousand years to grow as little as 10 centimeters. If you aren't that patient, you might actually be able to find stalactites in your hometown hanging under bridges. Water passing through concrete in bridges has the exact same effect and concrete stalactites can grow as fast as 10 centimeters in 10 years. It's a slight improvement right there. Where else do you think you've seen structures like stalactites? If you've never been to a cave, what else looks like a dangly spear hanging from things? Well, if you think about winter, you can see very similar structures forming on trees, which we call icicles. Icicles form very similarly to stalactites, only instead of leaving behind rock and mineral, what they're doing is they're leaving behind frozen droplets of water that form into ice and give us those dramatic needles. But enough about winter, it's beautiful and sunny outside, and I want to show you how to make your very own stalactites at home. Now, keep in mind, this experiment does take quite a while. It might take up to a week to see any effects, but trust me, it's worth the wait. All right, let's go. So for this experiment, you are going to need the following. You are going to need two identical glasses. You're going to need a plate or a tray to catch all the drips. I'm just using the lid of a Tupperware box here. You're gonna need some salt as well. Now you can substitute this for things like bicarbonate of soda or detergent powder. Keep in mind though, we are gonna be using quite a lot of this stuff in this experiment. So ask your grown-ups before you make your decision. You're also going to need some string. Now make sure it is cotton or wool string and make sure that it isn't waterproof because we're gonna need this to soak up all our water. We're also gonna need some scissors to cut our strings and we're also gonna need some weights as well. Now you can use things like paper clips. I'm just using these bearings that I had lying around the house. Anything will do, just make sure that they won't rust. So the first thing we want to do is fill our glasses with warm water. Make sure you're filling them both to around about three quarters full. So once we have our cups filled with warm water, we are now wanting to start spooning in teaspoons of our salt. So you're gonna need to start adding heaps of teaspoons to each of these cups. And what we're trying to do is we are trying to saturate our water with our salt. So what we wanna do, I'm gonna add about three teaspoons to each of these. And I'm gonna start just stirring the one on the left. And I want to keep adding salt until salt will no longer dissolve. Thank you. 
Now, as you can see, I have given these guys a good stir and there starts to be small amounts of salt appearing in the bottom of our cups there. That means that this water has dissolved as much salt as it's going to dissolve. This is exactly where we want to be because the more salt that we can dissolve, then the better the stalactite will be. So next, what we want to do is we want to take our string and we want to be able to cut a certain length that will then be able to dip into both of these cups and also have a wee hang in the center. So I would say arrange your cups as so and get an idea of how much string you're going to want to make. Now remember, do not be afraid to recut your string if you don't think you have the right length. Since this is a very long experiment, you want to be getting right, it right at the beginning. Once you have cut your string to length with your scissors, you're then going to take your weights and just tie them to each end. This is going to ensure that your strings aren't going to move during the week that we are setting this experiment up. So once you have tied your weights to the end of the strings, then all you have to do is just dip them inside and make sure that they're making way inside. Now, you wanna have a slight bend in the center, so a little top tip. I'd recommend folding in the center of your string just to encourage the stalag tight to form there. Once you're done, find a good out of the way space for, to leave your experiment somewhere that other people or pets won't be able to knock. And just leave it there for the next seven days. So I guess I'll see you soon. And there you have it, your very own salt stalactite. Now, some of you might even be lucky enough to have some salt pulling up on the bottom of the tray. What do you think would happen if you let that pull up over the space of a month? Well, what would happen is you'd have something that we would call a stalagmite. This is almost the opposite of a stalactite, where instead of the minerals being left on the ceiling, the minerals drip through the water, land on the floor, and then start building their spike from the bottom upwards. What else could you do to this experiment to change your results? Perhaps you could add a little bit of food coloring to both water solutions to give your stalactites some funky colors. If you do try this experiment at home, please don't forget to send us your pictures. We love to see what you're getting up to. And as, as always, please don't hesitate to send us your questions and comments. We love reading them and we'll try our best to answer them. Until next time, have a great day and we will see you in the next one. Bye bye.